Okay, the deck is all cut for shims. This is the shim right here. This is a 31 thousandths thick shim, stainless steel. Goes in here, and then your liner is going to sit on the top of this. If you've got uh, a good tight seal between your liner and the top of your head, your liners won't move around. That's what happens is the liners over time wiggle and go down in and then you can't pinch tight enough to seal the combustion pressure and you're gonna burn and blow the head gasket. I got the last six pistons and sleeves that Clevite had. They were in a warehouse in Missouri so I don't know if that means Clevite's not gonna make uh, pistons and sleeves for these anymore or not. Okay, this is a D343 1693 head. I want to show you what they look like and how they work. This is the opening for the intake. There's a about a quarter inch thick plate that goes over that and then one hole that the intake goes into. Uh, this is the old 1693 heads, this comes off so you can get in there and clean up all the old uh, junk, oil that gets cooked from the turbocharger. This is the business side of it. And I've got a pre-cup screwed in here. This is a pre-cup, cap pre-cup. They call these engines PC motors because of this pre-cup. And this pre-cup has a washer on the end of it. This is the gasket. And they come in different lengths or thicknesses and this is the end that it would screw in this is the the hole that it would go in and there's an o-ring that goes on it to seal the water anyway you've got to put it in and once you get it tightened up this is the glow plug hole right here and you've got to have your glow plug within 15 degrees of your center line of your crankshaft so you have to use different gaskets of different thicknesses to get it to do that. And the water goes from this o-ring down to here. And that cools And I've got that. one I cut in two to show you how that works. This is a pre-cup I cut. And this is the combustion chamber inside here and this is a cat capsule style nozzle they're uh, they only take about 700 pounds to make them squirt there's just one single hole in it but that goes in there and this adapter screws to that and this is what's going to put it down inside the hole and it's going to seal it's going to crush it right here and inside this pre-cup going to go in there and then this is going to go on to retain it and that pushes that nozzle inside and retains it in there anyway your combustion happens in here and then it blows it in that small hole that's in the end of the pre-cup and that blows it inside the cylinder on this cutaway pre-cup right here, um, they're cooled inside the head. The antifreeze cools them. And all this right in here is underwater. And it has to be because you've got uh, combustion going on inside this hole. And so it's going to get really hot. And it would completely melt this if it wasn't in water. But one of the drawbacks to a PC motor is because all this heat is being transferred into your cooling system you've got to have a larger radiator to take care of that heat and what they call that heat rejection uh, that heat should stay in the combustion chamber it does on a direct inject engine and that's how you make power is that heat is converted into power but on a PC motor you're gonna reject a lot of heat into the cooling system through these pre-cups and so these engines make a lot of heat and need a much bigger radiator than a direct inject engine.
And then, this is a double overhead cam engine. Hey, let me show you the cams. Oh, that's not the cams. That's, they're down here. We're just going to put those back in so we've covered them up. These are your camshafts. And these are your bearing blocks right here that they run in. You got a bearing block for every cylinder. These things will last forever. And then they're lubricated by an oil line here. Oil comes up from the bottom of the head up through here. And then you only drive, this is the drive for the cam there. You only drive one cam. There's gears on the other end of it that uh, tie them both together. There's the double gears that tie them together. Inside here, this is the adjuster that adjusts your uh, lash between your cam lo lobe and the cam follower. And inside here, this one doesn't have one, that's why I'm able to rotate it. It has a small spring and a plastic puck. And that pushes against the threads and holds this from rotating. Anyway, you put it in here, and then it has this angled hole right here. And what you do is you get a number two Phillips screwdriver, and you put it through that hole, and you can turn that adjuster and set your lash between here and your cam lobe. And you have to make sure that those, when you take them out, you have to make sure that that adjuster has quite a bit of tension on it. If it doesn't have very good tension, and I know this from experience, I've made this mistake. I put one in one time that needed the spring and the puck replaced, and promptly a few hours after running it, it started popping under this cover. Terrible. I thought something was broke. And what it does is it unscrews, and this thing goes so far down that every time that cam comes around, it just slaps it really hard. And if you let them go, it can break these bores, and then your head's ruined. And this is the piston. If you notice, the steel pin. Uh, this is a steel plug that goes in the top, and that pre-cup blows the fuel in on that. If you didn't have that steel plug in it, it'd burn a hole through the piston. And usually, when you take these apart. If they've been over fueled, you'll see cracks coming out from that plug. And I've seen them come as far out as the valve pockets. That means you're over fueling it. These pistons are really thick. You can't see it in there, the wrist pin's in the way, but there's a nut, a self locking nut and a washer that holds that plug in. And here's the deck. I'll show you. These engines were built a little different than they are now. Cat put the accessory drives on the back. And back there is the drive gear for the camshafts. And so when you mill the deck, they'll only allow you to take so much off the deck of the block and so much off the head. Um, but I've seen a lot more taken off than what the spec allows. Usually, as old as these are, there's enough wear in them that the drive shaft will still go through and into the cams. If not, you can put shims under the bearing blocks on the cams and raise them back up to you can get your drive shaft in. But anyway, the drives are always on the rear on these old ones. You got your starter there. And down there, that's the scavenge pump, and that scavenges all the oil out of the retarder housing on the back, out of the flywheel housing, and runs it up into the driveline bearing on the rear to lubricate it. And then you, this first pump you've got under here is the steering pump. You get a large section and a small section, and then the compressor, and then these two big main pumps run on the same gear in here. There's another pump identical to the steering and the large section of this pump operates the lift cylinders and the bowl and the ejector control 
and then the small section on the back uh, that runs your cushion hitch and then here's your flywheel and the retarder goes in there and you've got one more pump on the bottom here and this pump does nothing but run the bell cylinder and that's all it does then your fuel system plugs into the back also this is the fuel system and in this under here is where you time it there's a coupling that slips in there and you put a bolt in the flywheel and then you take this bolt out and this pin comes out of the cover and then you put it inside here and there's a slot on the cam drive gear in here and you put the pin in there and line it up with that and then you put the pin in the flywheel and then you retighten this coupler that's inside of here and that times them. This is your uh, primary pump supplies fuel to your fuel system and here's your uh, primer and your filters and your water separator and then inside of here past the coupler is a long uh, they call it a variable timing drive and it advances the timing it's got a set of flywheel weights and then it uses the engine oil pressure there's engine oil that comes up through the center of this gear and through this coupler and operates that variable timing drive it's quite a large long fuel system not nearly as big as the old old style ones but it's still kinda large this is your engine oil cooler there and then this is the adapter this comes off a 1693 truck engine and this will allow you to get rid of those great big oil filters the canister style oil filters that are on D343's and this allows you to go to a remote mount filter this is your inlet back into your engine all your oil comes out the bottom here and if the co if the cooler's plugged or cold it comes up through here and opens a valve and straight into the engine but generally it'll come out of the engine go through this cooler come out the other end and there's the other fitting it'll go into the remote mount filter come back and then go into the engine okay I want to show you uh, the piston on your left is a 1693 D343 piston and the piston on the right is a 3408 piston a DI motor and this is how thick the 1693 piston is and there's the nut that holds the plug in and this one I'll show you you can kinda of see the cracks they're black and they go around here and those are heat cracks from too much fuel this is a 3408 DI piston See, it has a fuel bowl inside of it and you can see everywhere where the injector sprays fuel it's all clean and then you can see it's not very thick out there at the edge probably only about one inch or so versus about two inch for that one and you, the other thing is there, the deck height on a 1693 is a little different. And so you can see the, the height of the wrist pin is different. 3408, 3406 piston, which are the same bore, just about the same piston. Uh, it's about 5 eighths of an inch shorter from the top of the piston to the start of the wrist pin bore. And you can see how tall that one is. And so the rods in a 343 are quite a bit longer than a 3406.